Oh, it clicked the button, please. The button is clicked. That's... Oh, it is. <laughs> That's how I know that we're in the frame. Tired from a long work day, friends. <laughs> Hello. Hi, friends. So, today we're doing something fun and doing the ice cream book tag. It's an original book tag that my friend Kristen over at Super Space Chicken and I came up with because we both really love ice cream. Like, really love ice cream. So we decided we would do a fun little tag centered around that. It's also part of our event, Turn of the Season, which is celebrating both our love of summer and our love of autumn. So that will be linked down below. So anyway, on to the questions. The first one is vanilla, and it is for what is a book you wish had more flavor? I'm gonna go first. So I recently finished Red Queen, and the verdict is I like it because there's something about um, uh, you know, revolutions and mutant powers that speak to me viscerally. It's just, um, if there was anything that was technically one flavor, it would be Mare's inner thoughts. And Mare basically has just four settings. It's always just, oh my god, I'm gonna die! And I'm like so red, and, and everyone's so silver, and I'll fight you. Those are the only four things that she basically has um, it, it, and they dwarf any other thoughts like this boy is cute and why would they betray me and oh my family no it's just really all those just the thing and so I wish there could have been more than that of course it's mean to judge a series by the first book because there's so much room the character could grow but um, maybe, maybe she will so I totally rented everything else from the library after this book um, so happy to and I'm excited to read the rest of it I guess that makes me mean because I totally judge series by their first book Anyway, the book in question that I'm going to talk to you guys about is one that I do not own or do not have at this point, at this point. And it is The Book Jumper by Mechthil Glaser, I want to say. I'm pretty sure I butchered that. But anyway, the premise of the book sounded really cool, which is why I was at first intrigued by it. It's about a girl whose family's legacy is that they are each a caretaker of a specific piece of literature and they're allowed to jump into the pages of the book and like meet the characters, walk around the setting, all of that. And the whole book centers around a mystery that starts when they discover that someone is messing with all of these classic works of literature by stealing things or like changing things. And I, I wanted to like it. And I think maybe in some ways it might have something to do with the fact that this is a translated piece of fiction. Um, but I just felt like it was a little bit meh. No, it was a whole lot meh really because I didn't even want to continue the series. There was just nothing really spectacular about either the setting or the character or even the magical ability to jump into a book. So the next one is chocolate and it is what is a long book or an immersive world that you enjoyed indulging in? Too easy. Too easy. And this is my answer, default answer for this question for the most part. And it is obviously the world of the Harry Potter series by JK Rowling. I, I love it. I just love every single nook and cranny of this world, even the creepy parts, just because ah, it's just so especially the vivid and alive to me in a way that not a lot of series have been able to replicate after this one. It's just, it's just so good and I just enjoy being immersed in it so much. Every time I revisit it, it always feels like I have returned home and I love that feeling so, so much. So obviously this had to be my pick for this. I like to reread a lot and so I would have picked Harry Potter if I didn't read these other two books more than Harry Potter. And it would be the worlds of Tamara Pierce and Garth Nix. Um, Tamara Pierce, especially Alana's story, uh, Tortle and Emelon, two different universes that she writes in, I must have reread each and every single book more than 10 times in the last decade. So that's literally one time and a year. And he's gonna do it again this year. And I'm totally gonna do it again this year uh, with everybody else. Same thing with Garth Nix, I must have reread Sabriel like 15 times. Um, because to this day, uh, the girl who switches places with her twin brother so she can pretend to be a boy and train as a, train as a knight, and the girl who comes from a long family line of people who don't c control the dead the way we normally think necromancers do, mm -hmm. but they keep the dead dead, is still fresh to this very day. And mm -hmm. so I read these all the time. Strawberry, a book with a romance that was super sweet. No. Are you going to go first for that one? Yes, I am. Um, so, uh, it was sweet to me. <laughs> um, terrible, terrible, just, you know, um, 
it 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 feel it ta it you know in, in the same way the fairy floss is sweet, right? It's probably gonna rot your teeth from from your head. Um, but I love it. I just I just I just everything here was just yummy to me uh, as, as as a book. And uh, for the I don't know who doesn't know what the Fault in Our Stars is about, but for the, any newbies, if, are you twelve? That's why you don't know what the Fault in Our Stars is. Uh, Pretty sure twelve-year-olds know what this is too. Uh, it's about a star, bunch of star-crossed lovers who are both terminally ill. That's a very nice way to describe it. My pick is a book that I read fairly recently, and that book is Geekarella by Ashley Poston. And this is basically a Cinderella retelling, but set in modern day and has a fandom and convention spin to it. Yeah. It's about a girl named Elle who is basically obsessed with the show Starfield, and she decides she wants to enter a cosplay competition and she needs to win it in order to win some cash so she can be free of her stepfamily. On the other hand, there is also this boy named Darian who is cast as the, how do I say this, as the uh, star of the film adaptation <laughs> of Starfield, which obviously has a lot of opinionated responses and some good, some bad, and Darian himself is struggling to figure out what he feels and like how he wants to stand in this media role. And these two just had like a really cute relationship build up. They basically end up talking because he tries to contact the organizers of the con that they're both going to be at and he ends up somehow with her phone number instead and they start texting back and forth and it's so adorable. Hurrah. And it's just so cute to watch their build up to like random stranger to like tentative friend to slowly becoming more like friends that they can relate to each other and like more obviously and it's just really really cute and really really sweet this was one of my favorite reads of 2017 so definitely check it out if you haven't already in my head the dude is harry styles i don't know why ice cream sunday and that is what is a book encompassing all the elements you love and that for me was really easy i really wanted to show all of his books but i only have this one with me right now and that would happen to be The Blood of Olympus by Rick Riordan, which is the last book in the Heroes of Olympus series. I think that all of Rick Riordan's books are really fun and really awesome, but I have special love for the series because it really combines all the elements that I enjoy. There's mythology, there's the friends traveling together, there's the ships, there's the <laughs> humor, the ship. there's like the heart Any Jason and Grace fans out there? It's just, it's, it's a wonderful blend of all these things and he does it so, so well. In case you were wondering what the series is, it's actually sort of a spin-off from the Percy Jackson series because you see a lot of familiar faces, but it also takes on an entirely new story. And it's just so good. It's, I can't even describe it because I don't want to spoil it, but it was so, so good. And I'm so impressed by the series and I continue to love it up until this day very, very much. I'm actually overdue for a reread, so that'll be happening at some point. Shout out to my peeps from Aphrodite Cabin. Anyway, sorry, just wanted to shout out to my people there. I would be an Iris Cabin if Iris Cabin were a thing. I'm just saying. Oh, it's and it would totally be a thing if you were an Iris Cabin person. But if not, then I'll just hang out with Nico. My favorite uh, book that has absolutely everything, and I really thought long and hard, what has everything of the diverse stuff that I do? Mm -hmm. And I would go with Imperium. Now, those of you who may have seen some of the reviews to go up on Alexa's blog or on the channel, um, I've been recently reading uh, the five books prior to this thing, but this happens several thousand years after the events of the first five books. So, and so it still has magic and science and dragons and destiny and royal lines and family lines and lineages and insane amounts of really cool backstory that gets referenced here that you just really really want to cry at the end of the day any board of fans yeah kind of like that only thousands of years later and then uh and a ship and a ship and it's not even the kind of ship that like it's obvious the way i don't take to why um, romances you know, in, of any genre <laughs> it's so subtle and at the last line of this book Oh my god, shippity do da day. That's right, that's the last line, I swear. So um, I, I ship it so hard, whatever that is. Um, and uh, it's Sega Fan, no, I'm kidding. Um, for those of you who've read Imperium, but this is really cool. So, highly recommended. Milkshake, and that is a book that blends genres. So, <laughs> in my head, you said milkshake that brings the boys to the yard. No, um, damn right. <laughs> 
all other genres kind of come together. So uh, Stephen King's The Dark Tower. So horror, sci-fi, fantasy, coming of age because one of the characters here is a little bit young. Uh, westerns because gunslingers. Um, uh, and, and yeah, and, and all of this stuff just gets blended in all, all together. Plus, it does. It also helps that uh, Stephen King did this crazy thing where he sort of semi alluded to the fact that all of his book universes are tied together mm -hmm. across the beams. So all the genres, all the fun, uh, they all lead to the Dark Tower. Anyway, that, that book is massive. It is awesome. Anyway, uh, I picked Incarnate by Jodi Meadows. This is the first book in her trilogy, mm -hmm, Jody. trilogy. I love this book so, so much. It is about a girl named Anna who is the first new soul born into a world where every single soul has been reincarnated multiple times. And her journey in this book is to try and figure out why she was born, how it came about, and what's really going on. She is ostracized by some of the people. She is welcomed by some of the people. So it's a very, very good book. I just really love it so, so much. And I wanted it to choose it for this one because it is also sort of a coming of age story, but but it also has sci-fi elements and it also has fantasy elements. And it's a very interesting and unique blend and I absolutely love it and would highly recommend it. That cover though. Sprinkles, a book with a colorful cover. Need I say more? I'd grind that up and put it in my ice cream. War Cross by Marie Lou. I chose a middle grade for this one, and it is Furthermore by Tahara Mafi, which is one of the most beautifully illustrated covers that is very, very colorful, as a matter of fact. And it's funny, too, because the story revolves primarily around a girl and her relationship with color. <laughs> that's really all I'm going to say. And it's kind a very Alice in Wonderland kind of story, which may, which means it's slightly weird. Well, no, that's a lie. It's really weird, <laughs> um, but in a good way. And if you like Obscure. fantastical and whimsical, then you will definitely enjoy this one. Ice cream cake, a book worthy of a celebration. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> totally going to cheat and use Warcross by Maria Lu. This is probably one of my favorite books I've read, if not my absolute favorite book it's of 2017. It's her current to order obsession. Perfect for fans of Sword Art Online. This book is about a world where a virtual reality game called Warcross has taken over the entire world. And Emika Chen is a bounty hunter who is trying to just, you know, make enough to get by as a bounty hunter. And one day she ends up getting the notice of the creator of Warcross because she hacks into and glitches into the opening game for the Warcross, like, championship ceremony and he notices her and he hires her in order to be a player in the championships to try and discover who is messing with the game and it is so fun you guys like it is just so entertaining I've read it. it's great uh Mackie loved it my sister loved it all of the people i've basically bullied into reading have loved it even the people i've sort of bullied into i just start i think it. it's just so entertaining especially personally if you are an anime fan you will probably find this I structurally would, wise i would say Warcross is the gateway drug for any anime friends you have that don't read. Yeah, this is they a would good gateway drug. So yeah, definitely check this one out, and I totally think it's worthy of celebration. You want to know what's what I'm celebrating? Gemini, Illuminae, and the space third, hijinks. Uh, more crazy, insane space hijinks, right? Uh, just a celebration, I think. Party in your brain and in your soul with these two books because it's sci-fi, YA sci-fi, I believe at its finest. It starts out when the Carenza colony is practically wiped out by some weird evil corporation. And in their escape of the evil corporation, they run into even greater crazy space hijinks. Of course. Uh, which, and it's, and it basically, it all boils down to how will our survivors uh, that have been, whose lives have been destroyed by this evil space, uh, you know, corporation. How are they going to win the day and, and fight mm. back and clap back? And I can't wait for the third book. I still need It's to one whole that. story. It's not just, you can't read one with, it's, it's insane. Ice cream cookie sandwich or three scoops on a cone, a book with multiple perspectives. Tamar Pierce fan, this is Will of the Empress. Now, you saw the Alana book earlier. This is the Emelon book, but unlike uh, the Alana book and all of the other eight books that came before this, it was told from the perspective of one of the characters. Four characters, spe specifically for this series, who have become foster brothers and sisters. 
Um, and uh, you get uh, in the first four books, uh, they discover their lives and their powers together. They're not regular mages who are like academics and they learn stuff from books. Mm -hmm. No, their power comes in the magic that they weave and the magic that they work through their hands on sewing, uh, smithing, uh, weather, plants, right? Ambient magic and, and magic and, and stuff. And the first four books are focused on them together. The next four books are focused on them apart, finding their way in the world. And this book brings all of them together as adults. And it is the yummiest mo I've reread it 18 million times too. It's told from all of their perspectives and it's easily my multi-perspective uh, uh, book fave of all time, I think. I had to. I picked Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Ooh. Yes, I could have picked Six of Crows. However, there is a point of view in this book that I really love that was added to it. So I'm going to go with this one. Extra bump up. This is the second book in the Six of Crows duology. And the first book is about a group of unlikely allies who find themselves involved in a very, very important heist. And this is what happens after said heist and all the consequences of everything that's gone on. And it is so good. I love this duology so, so much. If you're not into heist books, maybe you won't enjoy it as much as I did, but I totally would recommend it if you love things like Ocean's Eleven because heists and characters to love and lots of feelings. <laughs> plus, plus in this book, and I'm sure, I'm not gonna say who it is, but there are connections to the original trilogy she wrote in the Grishaverse, so you're gonna have to read to find out. Waffle Cone, a book you felt compelled to read very quickly. <laughs> Easy answer. Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Maas. This yeah, is that the, went away in a day. This is less. the latest installment in Sarah's Throne of Glass series, which I have loved since the very beginning. I particularly love this one because it is about Kale Westfall, who is my favorite male in that series. And it's just so good. It continues the story really well. It opens up the world in such a way that I did not expect it to. And it allows you to get to know Kale even better, to get to know Nezrin, who is a character introduced in Queen of Shadows, and also to see Irene Towers, who you meet all the way back in one of the novellas in the Assassin's Blade. So it's really, really good. I really, really enjoyed it. And you have to read it if you're a fan of the series. By the way, I was rolling my eyes because her types are very predictable. I know all her book boyfriends. She has a type. <laughs> And Kale Westfall, come on, man. This book I blew through an entire weekend, just literally the entire morning. I'm like, I'm blasting through this book. Uh, it's StarCraft Evolution. It's set after the game of, of uh, the game StarCraft II. So if I have any gamers up on here, StarCraft II was awesome. Uh, the, the events happened well after the Nova Core stuff, I think, or maybe. Uh, yeah, definitely after the Nova Core stuff, um, and it's basically a lot of uh, a lot of really cool hijinks uh, that happen in the, in the in the near future. And I couldn't put it down. I wish so hard that they would turn this into actual expansion packs because I really want to play through this. And guess what? It's done by Timothy, written by Timothy Zahn, the great Timothy Zahn of you know uh, Star Wars Legends universe fame. I'm still bummed that it's the Legends universe now. He gave us a Grand Admiral Thrawn, guys. But um, yeah, highly recommended for any StarCraft fans. Pint, a book you set aside but plan on going back to later. This was on my TBR, which was which Alexa got in the mail and she's like, you're totally gonna read this. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. And then I'm like, hungry houses, oh my God. And it flips back and forth between like the past and the present and the past and the present. And it's like in Canada. Um, and then what else is there? Uh, and there's like a, it's like a, a mirror. It, it, there's a, no, not even. It, it, it's it's like a, it's like a big mansion like in the thing called Gravenhurst. And of course it's alluring as that is, I just couldn't like you know. Even if they set it in like Bulgaria or some other exotic like the Carpathians, it just. <laughs> I, I'll get back to it. Easy answer. Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, which I did start reading. There are tabs in there, in case you couldn't see, because I meant to read it this year. Oh look, it's Sailor Moon in there, hanging out apparently in a classic. Uh, <laughs> hanging out well, in a classic. She is a car baby, so. Well, you put her in there, she'll I be Miserable too. Anyway. I'm not even gonna go into what this one is about because I'm pretty sure most people do know what it's about. But Russell I did- Russell Crowe singing? No. I did no. start this one. I do intend to try and read it before the end of the year. But yeah, I it's just one of those books where I realized I was approaching my reading of it wrong because I had divided it into a number of pages I had to read per month. 
and I didn't think about the fact that I would feel so disconnected from it by waiting so long in between my reads. So what I'm gonna do now is just like read it along with some other book on the side. So yeah, that is definitely a book that I started and I'm just gonna go back to it. The next couple of questions are basically just about our ice cream preferences. So the first one is, do you prefer a cup or a cone? I'm a cone person. Cone, it's gotta be a cone. Especially those crunchy waffle cones, oh my gosh. Waffle cones are life. They're the best. Mm. I don't know, there's just something nice about like that feeling you get when you get down to the cone. It's like ice cream and crunch. It's great. Favorite flavor? I would say cookies and cream is like my go-to default yeah, that would make for sense general. For you, yeah. But I do enjoy vanilla ice cream if I'm eating it with some other dessert, like pie or cake or anything like that. And or a spoon. I also really. like coffee ice cream, but specifically Hagen does coffee ice cream. But I will say that the one flavor that I do go out of my way to find is chocolate chocolate chip from <laughs> Hagen does because I am obsessed with that and have been since I was a teen. So. Uh, if I was gonna answer this question, it would be based on if I was gonna be stuck with one ice cream flavor the rest of my life only, what would it be? I would pick strawberry. It's been my love since childhood. It has not changed to this day. Mm. I don't like the ones with real strawberries in it because that's a little sour and it kind of, I just, I like my strawberries like fake. So it's gotta be that syrupy kind of sweet, you know, non-citrusy, you know, extract flavor of it. <laughs> so that's what I like. Toppings, do you like them? Do you not like them? I like toppings. Um, I like Oreo crumbles on mine. I like chocolate syrup on occasion. But I think like I generally default to having Captain Crunch on my ice cream or Rainbow <laughs> Sprinkles because both things are amazing. And if I could have both, I probably would. The toppings I put on my ice cream are not regularly found, like cake. I would, t I would, I would definitely put cake in the ice cream. That's I would top it with crumbled cake. Favorite local ice creamery? Mm. I would probably say I eat a lot of ice cream. I, t I go out on ice cream dates. So with a lot not of fair. You see this? Do you see I, how thin that is? I would probably say that. I look my, at ice cream and I bloat. Like, that's just. My current favorite is a uh, milk bar which has the cereal milk ice cream. Oh my gosh, Ooh, so good. I'm, I'm, I love it so much. It's so good. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I would probably say that one currently, although there are like so many in Manhattan, let's be real. I am Dairy Queen trash. We haven't been to one in a very long time, but he's still Dairy Queen trash. Blizzard all the way. All right, and the last question is best shared with friends. Who do you tag? I think we should tag Pat and Ian. I also think we should tag my friend Rachel from Hello Chelly who loves <laughs> ice cream. And change your ice cream, buddy. Don't you guys? Yeah, oh, we yeah, go they, for ice cream all the time. The photos and I see them. If you're watching this video and you happen to like ice cream, which I hope you do because ice cream is great, feel free to consider yourself tagged. Yeah, and tag us back. Put leave your name in the comments. We'll go over to your ice cream video and totally comment and, uh, and we watch can it. We all have an ice cream party. Other announcements. Uh, this weekend on Saturday, for all you New York viewers out there, I am going to be on a panel for Bee Fest uh, that Barnes and Noble does every year now, Ooh. and it's at Barnes and Noble Tribeca from one to three, and it is actually a panel centered around BookTube. Now, I am with a lot of much bigger booktubers who are all awesome. Like the real uh, Emma ones, from right? Emma Books, Michael <laughs> Book Lion, Monica from She Might Be Monica, Kristen from Super Space Chick. So yeah, I hope you guys will come if you can. It would be great. Uh, and the second thing I would like to say is that I officially am a candle rep for a bookish candle company, which Living surprises dream. no one. Uh, I am a rep for Canterbury Road Co. who has amazing candles. Her scent blends are on point. I would highly recommend the currently reading candle, by the way, specifically. Anyway, she has a couple of limited edition candles for this month, including a an Enchantment of Ravens candle, which has two alternate labels, and you can pick which one you want. And she also has a candle inspired by the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. Mm. So go check it out. And if you want to place a candle order, don't forget to use my code Alexa17, which I will leave in the box down below so that you get a little bit of a discount. And the third announcement is that we will be at New York Comic Con all four days, which is going to be really fun. And we're going to do a few of the bookish things. But She's totally cosplaying Emika yes, Chen. Yes, I am. I'm going to cosplay as Emika Chen from Warcross and as Nova from Renegades by Marissa Meyer. So it's going to be fun. Hopefully we'll see some of you there as well. Let me see. What else am I forgetting? I feel like I'm forgetting another announcement. Oh, fourth. Tamara Pierce event is going to start in November because 
Turtle a Spies Guide comes out on the 31st of October. And we are going to be reading all the Tamra Pierce books because we can. And, um, and we haven't we actually set up an official reading schedule, but the next time when we announce the actual event, you guys will be seeing that. But we would welcome any and all suggestions for videos you guys want to see. We have a couple already from some people, which is so cool and so great, and we're really excited. All right, I think that's it for now. Till we see you in the next video, you can find us on social media otherwise. 